everyone. Welcome to Sock Season Week 23, March 31st through April 6th, 2024. I'm Carol, host of A Stitch in Time, and I can be found on Ravelry as Knits and Pearls. Once again this week, I am going to showcase the designs from the Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet Series by Hunter Hammerson. I'm going to start out by showing you the last three socks from this book, and then we're going to delve into volume two. Once again, just a reminder that unfortunately, these books are no longer in print, but you may be able to find a secondhand copy. Hunter Hammerson also makes some of her retired patterns available a couple of times a year, and you can find out when that happens and which patterns will be available by signing up for her newsletter or following her on Instagram. Just to refresh your memory, The Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet was published in 2012 by Hunter Hammerson, and it contains 20 patterns inspired by vintage botanical illustrations such as this one. Each illustration ins has inspired two designs, a sock pattern and an accessory pattern, and they are named for the Latin version of the plant that appears in the illustration. I will do my best to pronounce the Latin names, and when I can, I will give you its more uh, commonly known English name. The eighth design from the book, and the first pair of socks for this week, is named Polypodium vulgari, uh, which is a type of fern. And you can definitely see that influence in the beautiful stitch pattern in this sock. I call these Fern Gully on Ravelry, and I knit them from Handmade in Cosba in the Moss colorway. Now I had quite an adventure with these socks. I only had a partial skein to work with, and I wanted to make the legs of the sock as long as possible. So I ended up knitting the leg of the first sock three times in order to be sure that I would have enough yarn for the pair. Crazy, I know, but worth it. Look how beautiful they are. So let me bring, as always, one of the socks in nice and close, and you should be able to see that lovely lace pattern running all the way down the sock. There is a garter rib heel flap here and a stockinette toe. And again, the lace pattern carries on into the toe very nicely. I love this vibrant green and I think it's just the perfect color for a sock inspired by ferns. As always, there's a last look at them on the sock blockers and then I will show them to you on my feet right now. is Luasa Latericia, at least I hope that's how you say it, uh, which is an orange alpine flower found in Chile and Argentina. So of course I had to knit my socks in orange. The book shows these as more of an ankle sock, but since I prefer a taller sock, I went ahead and extended the length of the leg portion. As you can see, they feature a gorgeous lace cuff and then the sock is finished out with just a ribbed pattern. I knit mine from Miss Babs Yummy Two Ply in the hibiscus colorway. As always, I will bring these in closer so you can fully appreciate the gorgeous stitch pattern. So you can see there's a line of garter stitch here and that helps the cuff to fold at the right spot and to stay in place. And then as I mentioned, the rest is just ribbing. Goes down into the heel flap and extends down all the way to the toe. So once again, I'll give you a really good look. And the 
last look at them on the sock blockers. sock design from volume one was inspired by Linaria bipartita, also known as purple toad flax. I knit my socks from Hazel Knits Entice MCN in the Chocoberry colorway. This is another lovely design that features an all over pattern. This time it is some twisted cable stitches set against a background of reverse stockinette. You can see the twisted rib that flows right into this all over pattern. Ends with some twisted rib at the toe and then also some at the heel flap. Again, a really good look at it close up. A look at the pair on the sock blockers and now you can see how they look when I'm wearing them. socks from the Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet as part of a knit along in Hunter Hammerson's group on Ravelry in 2012 and 2013. And while that make along was taking place, behind the scenes plans were underway for the second volume of the Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet. Published in 2013, Volume 2 was laid out much like Volume 1, only this time the designs were inspired by vintage illustrations of butterflies and moths. It contains 18 patterns in all, 9 are sock designs and 9 are accessories. I was very honoured to do some sample knitting for this book. And I cannot tell you just how exciting it was to see my knitted items on the pages in living color once the book was published. Because I didn't get to keep the samples this time, I will have to content myself uh, with showing you a couple of photographs. So the, I knit two samples for this book. The first was a pair of socks called Lacini Vigorier socks. They were knit from the BFL Luxe Blend by Black Bunny Fibers in the wonderfully named colorway, Hedgehog's Nose. And there they are in all their glory. And then I also knit a cowl called Batopsilus Porcelus. And the yarn that was used for that was called Liquid Silver by Vice. And the colorway name was Stacy. And there's a look at the cowl. So because I had already uh, knit the socks once for a sample, I did not knit them again for the knit along for this book. And there are a couple of other sock patterns that I didn't knit for some reason. But what I'm gonna do is show you the five pairs of socks that are sitting right next to me that I did knit from this book. First up is this crazy cool twisted rib design called Vanessa Antiopa. I knit my socks from some Cherry Tree Hill Super Sock Select Silk Blend Solids. Say that five times fast. This is the Tea Rose colorway. And I cannot wait to bring this closer and show you this amazing design, which has so much texture and movement. So you can see how that 
twisted rib flows out of the cuff and into the heel flap. And then there is a reverse stockinette instep and then a stockinette uh, sole. The reverse stockinette is repeated up here in the wedges that are on either side of the sock. Once again, like many Hunter Hammerson designs, these socks are mirror images of each other. And I am going to twist one around on the sock blocker so you can see how it looks from the back and on the instep. Sometimes easier said than done. <laughs> so there is the back. And then the instep. I just think this is such an imaginative design, so unique. And like I said, just full of texture and movement. I think she really outdid herself on this one. design is called Polyomatous argiolus, which is named for a blue butterfly. I used Araucania Ranko sock in the PT809 colorway, which is, as you can see, a blend of blue and green. As I bring one sock in closer, you will see this is a ribbed lace design that runs all the way down the length of the sock. You may hear some clicking in the background. I have a meatloaf in the oven. <laughs> Welcome to my glamorous life. This is a working kitchen after all. Anyway, you can see that the ribbing flows into the toe and also into the heel flap. And I think this tonal blue sets off the lace design really nicely. And again, you can see the pair side by side here. Erasmia pulchella is a moth whose prevailing color is a silvery green. And so I chose this yarn from Manos del Uruguay to knit these socks. This is the Allegria base in the Botanica colorway. And that is color number A8106. Once again, you will see a difference in saturation between the two socks. And that's something that sometimes happens with hand dyed yarns. And it's just the way that they are dyed. So as I bring this closer, you will see that this is a slipped stitch design and these columns of slip stitches alternate with columns of twisted rib. It begins with a ribbed cuff and ends with a ribbed toe and you will notice that these slipped stitches become less frequent as you work down the instep. I substituted a short row heel for these socks um, in order to keep the uh, colorway or color distribution intact uh, to avoid pooling around the instep is another way to put it. So I think I will bring these in again just to give you a really good look.
and one last look at them on the sock blockers. Ocelatus, also known as the Eyed Hawk Moth, served as the inspiration for this design. I knit these socks from Handmaiden Cosba in the ebony colorway. And if you watched my regular podcast in February, you will recognize this as the heels, toes, and cuffs of my February Personal Sock Yarn Club socks. I will bring them in closer so you can see this amazing swirled lace pattern that runs down the entire length of the sock. I'll do my best to get them lit up and in focus here. I know it's very difficult with the dark color, but I think you can see them there. So it ends with a ribbed toe and you will see they also have a ribbed heel flap. Again, I'll give you a good long look close up because they are very difficult to see from far away. <laughs> but they are beautiful and with the cashmere content in the sock yarn, they're also really nice and soft. <music> show you seven actual pairs of socks each week, one to wear each day, but I'm making an exception for this week and the next in order to show you all of the socks that I knit from the Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet Collection. And so the eighth and final pair of socks for this week is Metopsilis Porcellus. Uh, these socks and the cowl that I showed you earlier were inspired by the small elephant hawk moth. I knit these socks from some yarn from Squoosh Fibers and Yarn in the variegated raspberry mocha colorway, which is yarn that I bought many, many years ago when I first was starting to knit socks and buy uh, hand dyed yarns. I don't know if they're still dying. So you can see how this overall lace pattern creates scallops on the cuff here. And then the lace pattern comes to a point on the instep and flows into this slightly ribbed slip stitch heel flap. And then the foot is stockinette. So I'll give you another good look at them from this angle. And then I'll Turn them on the sock blocker so you can see the bit of ribbing here in the heel flap. And then the lace point on the instep. So one last look at them here on the blockers. Can see quite a difference between the two socks and the way that the yarn was dyed. And one last model shot for the week.
I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more knitting and crafting content, be sure to check out regular episodes of A Stitch in Time. As always, I will provide links to my Ravelry project pages for all of the socks that I showed you today. I hope you will join me next week uh, for the final week of sock season when I share all of the socks that I knit from this book, The Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet, Volume 3. In the meantime, it is time to wrap up sock season week 23 and finish getting dinner ready. <laughs> Have yourselves a fabulous week and thank you for watching.